Autism is disturbingly common, affecting as many as one in every seven or eight hundred children born. Many, but by no means all of these children, are mentally retarded. Some develop language. Others never do. <laughs> there seem to be such a wide range of symptoms. Are they all along this um, um, autism spectrum because they have a common cause? There's it because they all are related to the same part of the brain, or what? What, what? what links them together? Well, the key feature that links them together is the difficulties in social relationships. Mm -hmm. So even the highest functioning person uh, may have an IQ above average and really good language, uh, maybe out in the work world with a regular job, uh, they would still have that very fundamental problem in relating to other people. Yeah. Geraldine Dawson's own research is focused on just why autistic children find it hard to relate to other people. On your head and we're going to count to five, okay? Six-year-old Alex has autism. And to win his cooperation, the researchers have to employ patience, guile, and fun rewards. You got it! Ready to put on this silly hat with all this hair on it, Alex? We're going to put it on and we're going to count some more this time, okay? Ready? The hat is similar to the one we saw used in the Williams Syndrome research. And like that study, the plan here is to monitor the electrical activity of Alex's brain as he looks at faces. Is each one of these EEG signals associated with a part of Alex's brain? Well, each one of these signals is one of those electrodes uh, uh -huh. that you saw being put on his scalp. The signals from Alex's brain are recorded and processed as he looks at pictures of his mother's face or that of a stranger. In a normal child, the brain's response to the two would be very different. But Alex's brain responds to both his mother's face and that of the stranger as if they are the same. When it comes to faces, his brain is literally indifferent. In normal development, the brain is naturally wired to draw our attention to faces. And uh, you think about a young baby, even a newborn will prefer to look at a face as compared to another complex object. So there's something wired into our brain that naturally draws our attention to the social world. Yeah. Uh, and so we think this tells us that that mechanism that naturally draws our attention is not working properly. If you're not paying attention to social information, how are you ever going to learn to develop socially? Wow. Oh, nice looking at me now. And you yeah. smile. You're yeah. so good. In Tarek's therapy yeah. sessions, Bonnie spends a lot of time trying to get him to look at her and respond, hoping to instill in Tarek through endless repetition a facility most children are born with. Here it comes. Ready? Set. All right. One of the things that we're understanding is that the parts of the brain that are probably involved in autism are ones that come online really early in life, in the first and second year. So what we want to do is to pick up kids really hopefully by birth, but right now we're at about 12 to 18 months. And we try to stimulate those brain systems while they're still developing in plastic uh, in the hopes that the children will then uh, kind of grow out of their autism or at least be less affected. Yay. Oh, you picked daughter. Good choice. So the earlier autism can be spotted, the better. Oh, you need help. Hey, you can show me. One early you... warning sign, which oh, goes along with an indifference to faces, okay is the lack of a special form of eye contact. We tend to look at people at very specific moments. So for example, when I want to communicate with you, I'll check in visually, and then I'll point to something and check back. This is called joint attention, and actually turns out to be the uh, most significant diagnostic sign of autism. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the sheer amount of eye contact, but it's really how he combines eye contact with communication. Let's watch this. Two-year-old Kendall has great eye contact. Isn't that funny? Go right in the cup. You want to do it? Go ahead. Kendall's a healthy, typical little girl who's here to help psychologist Andy Meltzoff give me a lesson in the importance of imitation. Oh, good. <laughs> Kendall, watch this. I bet Alan doesn't even know what we can do with this. Watch this. Isn't that funny? 
Kendall want to turn? Okay. Okay. Whoa, <laughs> very good. Typically developing children are like sponges. Adults in front of them just behave and the baby watches wide-eyed and does what they do. They become little adults in the culture from watching the adult. Yeah, good pop. <laughs> do you want Uncle Alan to try that? You want him to try that? Four-year-old me is another great imitator. <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> Now that's imitation. Yeah. That's, that's imitation. Very good. Andy Meltzoff has done the same experiment with autistic children. Now you remember this toy. This child seems social enough and intrigued by the cup, but he isn't collapsing it as Kendall did. If you just walked in on the room uh -huh. and you were looking for eye contact, uh -huh. you'd think, oh, he's relating normally. But, but if you're looking for imitation, exactly. you don't get it. Exactly. I think imitation is a higher order activity than simply eye contact. So some children with autism can make eye contact. What they seem to have a profound deficit in is doing these simple imitation games, which seems to be relating to another person from the inside at a deeper level. It's yeah. this drive to want to relate to you as a person, to yeah. be like you. They don't have to seem to have that impulse. Andy Meltzoff thinks this failure to imitate other people is yet another useful early warning sign of autism. But he also believes it may be at the root of many of the later problems people with autism struggle with, stemming from a failure to see other people as beings like them. So one of the first things that you do in any kind of early intervention program is teach a child how to imitate. And there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, what you may have seen uh, with Targ is uh, she was imitating some of his behavior, just so he starts to look at the correspondence between what he's doing and what, what uh, she's doing. Uh. So in this case, the child doesn't have to think, you know, I need to imitate you, right. but they start seeing the correspondence between their action and your action as you imitate them.